Today, I'm gonna make this decade old Logitech C922 go from looking like this to like this or this. I'm gonna be using just one budget light and some free settings built into OBS. But I have to quickly mention a few things first. One, I'm not your math teacher. I won't make you copy random numbers or settings without context. I'm actually going to explain how webcams and lights work, make you a better creator. Number two, I'm not a liar. I won't be using multiple lights and expensive gear to try and make this look better than it can be. It really will just be one light and one decade old webcam because that's what you guys likely have access to. Oh, also I'm not sponsored by Logitech or newer today. I wasn't sent these. I bought all of this stuff myself, thanks to you guys who support the channel for just $1 a month. Which, if you want to support the channel as well, it keeps videos free of sponsors, unlocks emotes, free stream graphics, and as a little incentive, if we reach 100 members, then we're going to do a special live stream where we react to your content, give you feedback, and help you guys grow, as well as check out some of your setups. Sorry for that, back to the content. Now, the very first thing we're going to do is add our webcam. Today, we're using OBS to do everything, but I will say all of this will also work in Streamlabs. The only major difference is if you use Streamlabs, women will look at you like you pooped the bed. That's not my fault, it's just the truth. So let's go to sources. Click add source, add a new video source and have your webcam, if it's plugged in, obviously plug your webcam in, you need, you need it plugged in. Why was it not plugged in? And select your webcam from the dropdown. Now I can drag this to be full screen or I can right click it, click transform and then click fit to screen. As you'll see, it doesn't look great. In fact, the technical term for this is WHS or wet hot shit. So to fix this, we need to turn off all of the automatic settings so that we have a base to play with. Right click the camera source, click properties, and then change the default to custom. Here you'll be able to edit the resolution to be 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720. If you plan to crop in like we do later in the video or zoom at all, or want to be closer to your face, I do recommend using 1080p instead of 720. But of course it is important to mention that 1080p is a little bit more intense than 720p. And because you're a streamer, you're probably going to be using this shrunk down and off to the side of gameplay quite a lot, so most people wouldn't notice the difference between 1080 and 720. Next is FPS. You might be tempted with your little gross gamer brain to set this to be highest, but that can cause a weird amount of lag and isn't needed. So instead, I set this to match the source, or since I'm also sat at a desk gaming and not moving around a lot, I'll use 30 FPS. Granted, because I'm setting my C922 webcam to be 1080p, I can actually only use 30 as my max. If I was moving around a lot, then I would lower the resolution to 720p, which would allow me to use 60 FPS and this webcam. Next is color space. This should be 709. And then finally, color range is set to full. From here, we're gonna click the configure video button and we'll need to turn off all of the automatic settings by clicking these boxes. The final step for this section is to change the exposure setting here and set this to be minus five. Now I found other exposure settings can cause pretty hectic lag. So test it out for yourself and find the one that is smoothest for you to start with. Some webcams prefer minus six, others minus four. Usually minus five seems to be the best place though. Really important to mention is if this configure box doesn't let you edit any of these things, maybe it's all grayed out, then it means that your webcam's drivers or software that comes with it might not be installed or up to date. If you're confident those things are and you still can't change it, then check if you can change these things in the software that comes with the webcam. You can still follow along using that. In fact, I actually found that the Logitech software that came with this webcam had a lot more features built into it. And sometimes it was overwriting my OBS settings. So I was having to use both to balance everything out. Now, if all of that doesn't work, then I got to ask, did you buy a Timu webcam? Brother, why did you buy a Timu webcam? Otherwise, congratulations, you have a base, dirty ass webcam shot without any adjustments and likely just a ceiling light on. Now we can start making it look good. Well, as good as it can be. It's still gonna be a webcam. Now, depending on your room and how much natural light it gets, you might get a lot more quality than me. But my stream room has the lighting of a medieval torture dungeon with no natural light at all. That is partly because I use blackout curtains because I don't want random sunlight changing in the background of my shot. I prefer to control my lighting, which we'll talk more about later. My stream room is also quite small. So without my own lighting, you can see this webcam looks like utter garbage. Now, at the end of the day, you can adjust and change any setting you want, but without proper lighting, your webcam will always look pretty terrible. This is the same for a mirrorless setup as well. You need good lighting. In fact, the harder you try to make your webcam or camera not look like shit by pushing and pulling settings, you'll usually make it look worse. Because every time you change something digitally, you are going to degrade the image quality. I'll show you more about what I mean in a second, but first, Let's explain what I mean by lighting and recommend a good budget starting light. 
When I say lighting, your first thought is a room light or a light bulb. They sit above you and they light your entire room off the wall or off the roof. This sets you up to make a huge mistake down the line because lighting for a video film, or in this case, a live stream, means placing a light in a specific place to light a certain subject at a certain intensity to give a certain look. That's a lot of certain, so instead let's just say it's controlled specific lighting. Let's turn off our room light and instead turn on one of my newer lights. Today I'm using the GL1Cs, which are amazing budget lights with far more features, better build quality, and overall better design than their competitors. They're also two to three times cheaper than the most recommended light in streaming, the Elgato Key Light. Buying just one of these newer GL1Cs or even one of its younger brothers, which I do recommend more for a budget setup, will set you up to start having amazing lighting on a great budget. Again, not sponsored. I just think these are great lights that you won't ever need to replace or buy new ones later. Links in the description for these newer lights. Instantly, you can see that by switching to my newer, the quality does have a decent jump up. This is because my newer is placed in front of me, raised slightly, and then angled down to shine light on me. It's also aiming just at one side of my face, which allows me to have a slight shadow on the opposite side of my face, which feels like it's adding depth. This sort of depth is what we use when we're discussing a cinematic look. In fact, the angle of your light will do most of the work when creating a cinematic look. If I turn off my newer and I take this little handheld to move it around my face, watch how the shadows move. This will completely change the vibe we're going for. I love this ominous one, for example. Now, if you'd like a certain look or style, then go nuts. You can try different angles that fit you and your content, but this high to the side is the easiest to start with. Now we're gonna talk about another form of depth later in the video, which is what you can kind of see here. I've added this very harsh, intense orange light so it's easy to see. But by adding this, I'm also adding depth to the background of my shot. Again, we'll cover that later, but for now, let's raise the brightness of our newer all the way to max so we can learn about exposure. With this set to max, we are far too bright or the technical term, we look like shit. Okay, it's actually called being overexposed. So let's drop it right down to the bottom. And again, what's that technical term? We, we look, look like, like shit. shit. No, it means being underexposed, you idiot. We need to find the right brightness from our lights for our skin tone and the distance that our light is from us. Once we're happy or have it close to correct, which spoiler, it'll never be perfect for you. You will be editing this stuff the rest of your life. But once we're close enough, we will then also, if we want to use the gain feature or the ISO feature in our webcam settings to adjust this and tweak it further. But don't go too extreme. Remember earlier I said changing your settings to compensate bad lighting will lead to worse image quality. Now that you've done this, you might notice you look really pale, potentially green, purple, red, or even like you're cosplaying the current president of the United States, China. You see, the second major mistake people make is they don't understand white balance, which then gets even harder to deal with because webcams are terrible with white balance. Essentially, different lights produce different color temperatures. You need to set your webcam or any camera to match that white balance so that you get accurate colors. This is another reason why I don't allow sunlight in because that's adding a different white balance to what my main lights are. I love these newers because they're what we call bicolor. Well, that's not true. These newers that I'm using right now are actually full RGB, meaning they can be any color, but even the younger brothers that I linked in the description are by color. This means I can change my newer to start producing an orange light similar to tungsten light bulbs, which have a white balance of around 3000 Kelvin, which you can see how orange I go, or the opposite direction, I'll go all the way to blue by moving towards 6000 Kelvin, AKA nighttime or shady lighting. Normally I set my lights for a human face with skin like mine, so that it's producing a daylight or white color of around 4,500 to 4,700 Kelvin. Then inside my camera or my webcam, I will find the white balance setting and set it to something similar. To adjust this manually, you'll go into your webcam settings and find the white balance setting. As you can see on screen now, I've got the automatic turned off and I'm dragging this to find the balance for my lights, which in this case, again, is around 4,600, 4,700. Okay, so you have a light for yourself and you have your white balance. Let's talk about framing mistakes because placement of your webcam can really make or break your entire shot. Find a nice place for your webcam so that you fit cleanly into the frame with not too much headroom and not too much from the lower side being shown. Also make sure that people can actually see the background you've put a lot of work into. Once you have that, it's time to make micro adjustments either by moving the webcam slightly or you can add a crop filter. Right click, filters, add filter and crop. And then you can type in numbers here to slightly crop the edges and remove ugly things like wires, air conditioning units or more. Just make sure to balance the crop so that you don't have really strange sizes of your webcam. The other way to crop is much simpler. Click on your webcam, hold alt and then drag the edges inside OBS. 
Make sure you don't go too wide or too tight when you're cropping. You want room to breathe, but also you don't wanna have lots of dead space around you. Next, your eye line is really important. I recommend placing a webcam at eye height or just a tiny bit higher. Again, don't go to extremes. Too high and your audience is gonna be looking down on you, literally, and don't go too low because, well, look, no one wants to see what this looks like, but here it is. With all of your framing and your key lights and white balance set up correctly, we now need to talk about backdrops. These days I stream using a mirrorless camera with a proper lens. So I get a lot of creators asking me, what filter are you using to blur your background? And when I read that message as a trained filmmaker, it makes me want to die or go back in time and destroy the first prototype iPhone. That filter you like is actually called depth of field. On a proper camera lens setup, you can shoot at lower depths of field to allow for a better blur, AKA it makes the background go out of focus. But if you are using a webcam, as you can see on screen now, it is almost impossible to get this depth of field, meaning often you sadly blend into your background since everything is sharp and in focus. To fix this, I recommend trying to add a lot of distance between you and your background and then you add different colored lights behind you. Either you can shine the different colored lights into your background to make that stand out and different to you, or you can do what I've done here in this shot and get a light that's going to shoot orange or 3000 Kelvin at the edges of your shoulders. I've made today's quite drastic because I wanted it easy to see. This is called a rim light and it's specifically designed to cut you out from your background. Try not to make your background too dark or too bright. There's an idea here about balancing. You don't want to distract from you and you don't want to look like you live in a creepy basement unless you do want to live in a creepy basement. In that case, I'm not going to judge, but kind of weird. When using a webcam, I don't recommend getting fairy lights or small bulb lights for your background. You can see in my old stream shot with a mirrorless camera setup that I have fairy lights that look great, but this is because the real camera setup has depth of field, which smooths them out, blurs them out, and makes what is called bokeh. On a webcam, they just look gross. All of this said, if you can't make your background look nice, I do have a tip coming up soon that will set you up, no worries, so stay tuned. First though, if you add bright lights in your background, sometimes it can look great to you in real life, but be overexposed in the webcam shot. If you are exposed properly, but your background lighting is overexposed and white or blown out, then you have two options. First, turn down the background light. For example, the Squirtle and Twitch lights have a button to lower the brightness. If they didn't though, that's when it gets more tricky. What I would have to do is lower the gain or ISO on my webcam until they were both exposed correctly. And then I would have to pump my newer lights much, much brighter to make up for the lower exposure in my webcam. Doing this can be incredibly difficult. When my background lighting is at its max brightness, I had to drop my ISO and exposure incredibly far down for them not to be overexposed, which meant I had to pump my newers to be incredibly bright and actually hurt my eyes. So if you're struggling to balance them and you can't simply lower the background lighting's brightness, just remove them from the shot. Before we move on, I will say, yes, there is software that can digitally add a blur to your background. It uses some AI tricks to read the background, read you, and then blur it out. But let's be real, it often looks like shit and blurs out your edges on your face a bit. And who actually has the GPU and CPU processing power spare for that? Like, come on. Speaking of GPU and CPU processing power, the next step is color corrections and adding a LUT. The reason this is the final step is because if you don't make your lighting, white balance, framing, and everything else look good, then this won't do anything to help you. If you add color correction and LUTs to a bad shot, you are sprinkling glitter on a turd. Sure, now it sparkles in the sun, but guess what? It's still a turd. There are two ways to color correct. The first is going back to your camera properties and doing slight adjustments to your saturation, your contrast, and more so that you look better. The other way to add color corrections is to add a color correction filter in OBS. Go down to your camera source, right click filters, color correction, and here we have a lot of settings. Quickly going through them, you've got gamma, AKA a really bad gain exposure. Contrast, it's literally designed to make you look edgy and cool. I'm just kidding. It pushes your darks darker and your bright spots brighter. It can be pretty rough. Brightness is a weaker gain. Saturation is how intense the colors are. Hue shift can make you look like an Oompa Loompa and opacity is how see-through you are. In this section, I really only recommend doing slight tweaks to push yourself towards what you feel is a cleaner image. 
do not go to extremes because quickly these settings will stack on each other and get intense. Now, the next filter is really valuable and incredibly important. It's called the apply LUT filter. Of course, you'll need a LUT file to use this. And a LUT is essentially a file that tells the camera it should look a certain way. It literally stands for look up table. It's just a bunch of squares that tell your software what certain colors need to match. I hate to explain it this way, but if it's gonna help you, it's gonna help you. It's kind of like an Instagram filter. Anyway, of course, this means that if you're really orange and you add a LUT that's supposed to add a nice sunset feel to your image, then you're probably gonna go extremely orange. China. I use a self-made LUT these days, but there are plenty available on the internet and I'll link some of my favorites in the description. Most LUTs when first added are going to be way too intense. So you'll go into your filter settings and actually lower the LUTs intensity until it looks nice for you. Okay, maybe you don't have much space or a nice background or your mum's off in the corner throwing beer cans at your head. Come on, mum. Then what do we do? Boom, green screen to the rescue. You can grab a cheap pop-up green screen from Amazon and drop that bad boy behind you. To set up a green screen, you need to light it evenly. Essentially the entire green screen needs to be the same brightness and the same saturation. Remove any big bright spots or any shadows from it as best you can so it is a solid green. Hear me? Solid green. Oh, and obviously don't wear green in front of it because we're gonna be removing green. While we have done this whole video with just one light, I am going to use a second light to help me remove a shadow just so you can see what I'm talking about. Once I have it the best I can, which today it's definitely not good because I'm using barely any lighting for this, we will jump into OBS, click add filters to the webcam, and we're gonna add a color key filter. Select screen color and then click the green that is most common behind us. This will suddenly remove everything that it can that is matching it. Then you'll use similarity and slightly move it up to remove similar shades of green, but be careful not to lose parts of yourself. From there, you're gonna add smoothness to smooth out the fall off on the edges of the green to you. And again, don't use too much of it. Because today I'm trying to limit myself to using only what you guys would have access to, I am going to have to use multiple different color key filters over and over to remove the different shades. And even then it still won't look perfect, but I'd rather be accurate to what you guys are dealing with. Once I have all these added, as you can see, I've removed my background and so have you. Congratulations, you're boring and lame. That's right, removing your background is boring and lame. Don't be boring and lame, damn it. Do something fun and unique. Honestly, one of the entire reasons I grew when I first started on Twitch was people saw me in a milk aisle, clicked in and had to ask me, hey, are you in a motherfucking milk aisle? Essentially, I dropped a photo of a shopping center milk aisle into Photoshop, or I could use an online tool if I wanted. I added a blur to it so it looked like it had depth of field, similar to a main camera, and then, I just put it in OBS. That's all I had to do. People loved it. If you choose to use a green screen, then be unique. Find something that fits you. Or if you do just wanna have a basic nice background that makes you feel more confident, then you can just grab a screenshot of a stream room, add some blur to it and throw that behind you instead. If this video helped you out at all, maybe you learned something new, maybe you chuckled at one of my terrible jokes, then consider liking it down below or tell me in the comments, it really means the world to me. If you wanna support me directly, you can actually become a member to the channel for just $1. You get some emotes, some badges, some cool stuff. And for every member, I will travel back in time and destroy one iPhone. That's right, it's coming for you, Steve Jobs. See you next week.